السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف النبيين والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين in the name of Allah the most merciful the bestower of mercy all praise and glory belongs to Allah Lord of the worlds and may the finest peace and blessings be upon of Allah be upon the most honorable prophet and messenger our prophet Muhammad and his family and his companions every last one of them اللهم أمين in Surah Al-Shu'ara in the chapter on the poets, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala criticizes the majority of the poets of humanity for being people that have no values and people whose words are not aligned with their actions and the likes, he makes an exception. And he says subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَانْتَصَرُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا ظُلِمُوا Except those that believe and work righteous deeds, they're consistent with their words. And they remember Allah much, meaning they don't allow that to be the norm and the default and the majority of the preoccupation of their lives. The remembrance of Allah, they make much of it. So it keeps their heart contained, keeps their hearts pure, and they support the verses, meaning the Muslims after they have been oppressed. So Allah permitted this good poetry as one of the good forms of supporting Islam and the Muslims. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, Al Hassan ibn Thabit and others, and he said in the Battle of Uhud, O Hassan, get up. They're insulting the Messenger of Allah, insulting his family, insulting his bravery and accusing him with regards to it. So Hassan radiallahu anhu stood and he he shook his tail left and his uh, his tongue left and right in his mouth and he said this lion has remained silent for too long. Meaning it's time I use what Allah has given me to please Allah. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, hold on, go to Abu Bakr first. So you make sure when you insult back, when you defend the Messenger of Allah and his reputation, you don't accidentally insult him in the process by, for example, insulting one of their far grandfathers, right? And the Messenger of Allah would have the same ancestor. So he said, don't worry, O Messenger of Allah, I'm going to pull you out from between them the same way you pull a hair out of dough. You're going to come out clean, don't worry. And then he walked towards the mushrikeen and he said, Hajawta Muhammadan fa'ajabtu anhu wa'inda Allahi fi thak al-jaza'u Hajawta Muhammadan barran taqiyyan Rasool Allahi shimatuhu al-wafa'u fa'inna abi wa walidahu wa'irdi li'irdi Muhammadin minkum wita'u he says, you insult Muhammad, so I respond on his behalf. And with Allah, for that is the reward. You insult Muhammad, the pure and the pious, the messenger of Allah, whose hallmark is loyalty and honesty. Indeed, my father and his father and my honor are all a shield against you for the, for the honor of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, that poetry is words. The good of it are good and the evil of it are evil. Meaning so long as the words are good and the intentions behind them are good, then they are good. And the opposite is the opposite. And that's why when Hassan himself tried, because many people may think this is inappropriate, when Hassan began saying poetry in a masjid, Umar ibn Khattab tried to stop him and he told him the Messenger of Allah, the most pious permitted this to be in the masjid. Not the default, not at the expense of anything else, but he permitted it in the masjid. So Umar refused to prohibit him. <laughs> prohibit him, right? <laughs> <laughs> so Umar radiallahu anhu himself, the most pious of the ummah after the messenger of Allah Abu allowed Hassan ibn Thabit to mention poetry in the masjid. And of course we have our, our beloved guest, our Shaykh Kamal Salih, hafizahullah. Uh, who's much more than a spoken word artist, and that's kind of the reason why I love him so much on a personal level. <laughs> and so he wishes to share with you a, a bit of his experiences regarding da'wah, and especially da'wah in NYC, and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted for him this avenue. Uh, of servicing his deen, may Allah continue to make him an asset for this ummah and find for us places in the da'wah as well, sincerely for the sake of Allah and not allow anyone a share of our intentions. May Allah accept this gathering from all of us, us and you alike. And I'm not going to take any more time from our brother, inshallah. His is the stage before anybody else's.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. First and foremost, Jazakallah khairan to the masjid that has permitted this event. And second, thank you to Muslims giving back. Wallahi, I was in Chicago and I said there's no way I'm not going to New York to visit, not not to not visit Muslims giving back. So Jazakallah khairan. Um, Subhanallah, New York City. Wallah, there's not much someone from Sydney, from the other side of the world, knows about New York apart from Home Alone. So, <laughs> um, it's an inspiration to come out here and see so many faces, so many youth. Mashallah, it's, it's, an, it's an absolutely beautiful scene. Like, Subhanallah, we're driving through Times Square, and um, when I saw like a hundred people lined up outside the halal guys, I was like, whoa. <laughs> Like subhanAllah, you know, Muslims here they have a presence, so it's a it's a very beautiful feeling to be on the other side of the world, but to see such an amazing presence of Muslims. So may Allah reward everyone for for who has come out tonight. Amen. Um, first and foremost, contrary to what was said downstairs, the Sheikh said, Fadilat al Sheikh Kamal Saleh. I'm far from it, far from it. Um, from those that to those that don't know me. A couple of years ago, I was far from a sheikh and far from a Muslim, if anything is that. SubhanAllah, I had a very, very, um, you know, irreligious youth period of my life. Um, it's, it's funny, like, you guys might look at me now and say, SubhanAllah, but Wallahi, it was nothing like this. About three years ago, when I had enrolled into university, I enrolled into a media degree at Macquarie University in Sydney. And I still remember this day very, 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 very clearly. And many of you guys will find this very funny, but wallahi, it's, it's 100% true. I'm sitting in my media class, and the, the teacher, he walks around the class and he asks everyone, because it's the first day of school, first day of university, he says to everyone, what are you doing in this position? What are you doing in this class? So everyone goes out and tells them, you know, their aspirations and their hopes for being in a media class. And then he comes to me and he says, what are you doing here, Kamal? I say, I want to make music videos for Little Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> Wallahi, that's exactly what I said. I was, I was sitting there in my, I had a Little Wayne t-shirt, in my, you know, young money, cash money, all dressed up. And, and I was... <laughs> <laughs> and leave, no, no, no word of a lie. This is exactly what I said. And there was a, like an awkward silence in the class for about like five minutes. Like, who is this one of me? <laughs> but subhanAllah, that, that's no word of a lie. And subhanAllah, I spent the first year of university just learning how to make videos. Learning how to make, you know, and I, and I, I looked to inspiration of music videos. I used to love music videos. All the rappers, you know. SubhanAllah, like, I walked into my hotel just about two days ago and it's, it's a really bad thing, like, America is, is very bad in this aspect, I must admit, so it's, you know, I walked into my hotel and the next door neighbor is just thumping, 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 started from the bottom, now we're here, and it's screaming, <laughs> screaming, screaming, and I'm like, this is really bad, but SubhanAllah, that's the kind of culture that I had two, three years ago. And it's infiltrated into so many people's minds and it, it actually influenced me really, really bad. And what had happened was I used to go on every day this website. Um, for those that know it, Worldstar. Who knows that website? <laughs> Don't put your hands up. <laughs> All right. I used to go on this website every single day. Don't worry about five, five daily prayers. I was on that website every single day, five times a day. Just looking for the latest music video. Looking for the latest, you know, Little Wayne music video. And I was just like, hoping, hoping, hoping that one day I would have the chance to direct my own music video. I, I didn't want to be a rapper because that wasn't my thing. But at least direct a music video of Little Wayne or Young Money or something like that. Like, it, it sounds really, really like, you know, no one wants to do that, but that's, that was really my dream. So I spent my whole year just learning all these skills. And then SubhanAllah, Allah had written down that year that the only time I had a chance to utilize these skills was with the Muslim Students Association. So being the, the hypocrite that I was, someone who was addicted to rap music, addicted to a hip-hop lifestyle, 
I used to help out the MSA with, with, with their videos and their designs and everything they needed for Islamic Awareness Week, this and that. And subhanAllah how Allah slowly started to change me. It was a very, very gradual process. But I, but I thank Allah, for Allah is the best of planners. And the way He changed me, Wallahi, you can't write this stuff down. I still remember one day, very, very clearly, I was driving around the university campus. I don't know, I was, you know, windows down, blasting some, you know, Rick Ross track or something really, <laughs> really, really, just, you know, jahil poetry. And I was pumping up, pumping up, and driving past. And then as soon as you pass the university in Musalla, what do you do? You wind your windows back up, you turn down the music, slowly, 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 and then you drive off. And then I pulled up at the red light, and then, you know, slowly winded down, back down my windows, and started blasting the music, sitting at the red light like this. Listening to music, listening to music, listening to music. And then SubhanAllah, out of 10,000 students to pull up right beside me at the red light, it's the Muslim Students Association president. <laughs> I'm not making this stuff up. This is no word of a lie. This is, and I was just like, oh, snap, like, <laughs> turn the music back down. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> like, it's funny, but it's true. And subhanAllah, Allah does these things to teach us lessons. Wallahi, Allah does these things so strategically. You couldn't plan them if, you, if your life depended on it. But Allah plans it so precisely and so perfectly to teach you a lesson. Pull your socks up, Kamal. Pull your socks up. Are you going to be a hypocrite? Are you gonna, or are you going to leave this once and for all? Because there's no more double lifestyle. You either pick one or the other. So SubhanAllah, after that, I said, you know what? Sack this. I don't want, you know, no more music videos. I don't want no more hip hop. This, I just want to stop everything. So SubhanAllah, that year, um, my friend gave me heaps of da'wah to the point that he encouraged me to go to Hajj. So this is in about 2011, at the end of 2011. He gave like he pushed me to the point that I went to Hajj. And this was the, this was the time in my life when I said, for good, 100%, I'm not going back. Because from Australia, it's really expensive to go to Hajj. And being someone, you know, I'm not going to spend another $8,000 just to, you know, go back, sin, and then I have to go back and repent. I go, that's it. You know? <laughs> repent for good and never go back to it. So SubhanAllah, I was sitting there, I still remember on, on the plane of Arafat. And this is something personal, but I'm sure many of you can really, really benefit from this. So I'm sitting there on the plane of Arafat and I made a very, very, like, very personal dua to Allah. And I still have it on my phone at home. Because I wrote all my duas on the phone, so I don't forget. So I wrote, I said to Allah, Ya Allah, you've given me all these skills. You know, whether it's in music, whether it's in video production, whether it's in, you know, how to use social media. You've given me all these skills in media. But since the, since the get-go, since the very beginning, my intention was only to use it for haram. So please, Allah, allow me to use these skills for your sake. I made that dua and it was a very, very personal dua. I said, Ya Allah, you give me all these skills. Please, please, please let me use them for your sake. So I went back to Australia and I never thought much of this to happen. Until I was sitting in summer school. This was like one month after Hajj, sitting in summer school. And the lecturer was sitting at the, he was standing at the podium in the university. And he was lecturing the students about the importance of using media. Because, I, because I'm in a media degree. He says, no matter who you are, where you're from, what your background is, you have to be using the media. You should let the world know your message. Let the world know who you are. SubhanAllah, it was like Allah put, me, put him right there in front of me to just remind me of what I made the dua for. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, snap man, I really, really, really need to get my stuff together. So I jumped on YouTube within that lecture, sitting inside the lecture hall, and I typed the words religion in the YouTube search bar. Because I thought, you know, a hundred percent there has to be at least, at least one Islamic video after writing the word religion on YouTube. At least on the front page. To my surprise, there was nothing. 
There was not a single Islamic video on the front page after writing the words religion. Contrarily, there was a Christian video talking about Jesus in the form of a poem which was getting millions of views. And I'm just sitting there and this video was released like three, four days ago. And I said, this is my first task. This is my first task. You know, alhamdulillah, I have the skills to make a video. I have, you know, after listening to so much garbage rap songs for like the past three years, I think I know how to rhyme a bit together. So I'm going to respond to this. And wallahi, within two days, I finished, I finished the video. Many of you might have seen it, Why I Hate Religion But Love Jesus, and uploaded it straight to YouTube. Within a day, it got 100,000 views. And subhanAllah, I still remember this very, very precisely. Remember at the start of the lecture how I said I used to go on this website every single day just dreaming to one day direct a music video for this website? Because this website only puts the best hip-hop videos out. One day after, I get a call on my phone. And my friend says to me, go on Worldstar. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He said, just go on Worldstar. So I went on. And subhanAllah, my video was on the front page of Worldstar. And wallahi, there's a hadith of Rasulullah please correct me if I'm wrong. He says, whatever you give up for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it with something way, way better. Little did I ever think that I was dreaming to one day make a rap video, hip hop video or something very, very low. And Allah will replace it with allowing me to go into this platform and talk to them about Islam. People were telling me they never put Islamic videos on this website. How did they do it? Say, SubhanAllah, Allah, Allah works in the most mysterious of ways. Allah works in the most mysterious of ways. The ways, Whoever fears Allah, Allah will make for him a way. And this is, this is something we should always, always keep in our minds. And know that, look, I'm nothing special. Wallahi, I'm nothing special. And I, I really think it's very important to get this off of my chest that I always have to remind myself, you know, it's never about the speaker, it's about his speech. And what is the speech that I was saying? This is the speech of Rasulullah This is the speech of Allah. And it is because of this speech that Allah has honored us with, that we are able to reach so many people. Hassan bin Thabit, as the Sheikh was mentioning, he has a beautiful quote. He says, my words do not beautify Muhammad, Rather, the mentioning of Muhammad وسلم, beautifies my words. Just think about that, ponder over that. So, subhanAllah, Allah has given us all that we need to call the people to Islam. And many of us have different skill sets. That's what I really, really have to mention. Because not everyone here is a poet, not everyone here knows how to make videos, not everyone here has skills in, 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 on computers and social media. But every single one of us here has something to offer. Every single one of us here has a talent, has something very, very special that they can offer. And wallahi, it might not be much. It might not be much, but wallahi, Allah will bless you in it if you use it for His sake. And I don't think I have that much time left before I pass. On. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you a funny example. What happened like last week, and this is just to really really pinpoint on this point that you don't have to be something spectacular to call people to Allah a brother called a, a brother messaged me on my on my Facebook page he's from Saudi Arabia well it's, it's the most biggest coincidence he messages me on my Facebook page he goes I'm from Saudi Arabia and I've been playing with this guy on Call of Duty PS3 and he goes he's from America and you know, I'll be speaking with him on the microphone while we're playing video games about Islam. Literally, this guy, he's not a sheikh, he's, he's not like someone religious, he's someone who plays video games. And like, really, he he's like, heavily plays video games. And he goes, he's interested in Islam. I go, alright, give me his WhatsApp, I'll see if I can speak to him. So I WhatsApped him about three weeks ago and I never got nothing. Never got any message from him. And then I, I never thought much of it. And then subhanAllah, he messages me back when I'm at the airport. And I'm like, sack this man, how am I supposed to help this brother? You know, I'm, I'm at the airport, I'm leaving, I'll, I'll never be able to see this guy. And subhanAllah, I go, 
look man, I can't really speak to you because I'm on my way to Chicago. And then he goes, brother, I am from Chicago. And subhanAllah, I met him in Chicago. And I met, and we took him to the convention and we spent the whole day with him and he was the most beautiful of personalities and, he, and he, he was so close to Islam. And we asked Allah to enter him into Islam. But subhanAllah how it worked out. The brother is sitting there playing with him on PS4. Next minute, I don't know how he co Allah coordinated it. Allah coordinates for this man he's playing with on PlayStation 4 to come meet with me and I got him to meet with all the Dahis, with all the Mashiach who was sitting with Brother um, Ustaz Hamza Sotsis, with all of them. SubhanAllah how Allah plans these things. So whatever you have, whatever you have to give, offer it for the sake of Allah. And I really, I don't want to stand here as a hypocrite because we all have our shortcomings in the da'wah. But I ask Allah to allow us to continue whatever He has given us in His path. And never to hesitate. Um, I think another, another beautiful story is the way Allah helps us. I remember when that movie came out, the, the one that insulted the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I went out one day as soon as, this mess, as soon as this film came out and I jumped onto Facebook and I just wrote one long, boring, really hate-filled status against the makers of this film. And there's a really, really important lesson behind why I'm saying this. So I wrote one really, really stupid status against the makers of this film. Cussing them, you know, swearing at them, saying very low stuff about them. And then subhanAllah, I have one convert friend. He comes up to me, he messages me in private, and he says, Kamal, you could do better than that. So I think that's important. He goes to me, you could do better than that. He goes, if anything, your status was doing more harm because it doesn't really reflect the true status of a Muslim. So I deleted the status and I felt really, really bad. I go, you know, the message of Allah, he was insulted. And here I am, I can't even write a status about it. But subhanAllah, so many times we underestimate our true capacity. I was sitting there thinking that my capacity was to, you know, write a, a hate-filled status against the makers of this film. And I was really upset when I had to remove that status. So I went, I went to sleep very, very upset. Very upset and sad and knowing that, you know, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was insulted and I had done nothing about it. And subhanAllah, that night I had a really, really profound dream. In my dream, I was sitting in a mosque, just no different to this mosque. And the Sheikh was speaking to me directly and he was saying to me, Unsurullah, which means give victory to Allah. And I, and I said to the Sheikh, what do you mean? I'm sitting in my dream, I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, Unsurullah. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know what you're, trying, what, what you're trying to get at. And subhanAllah, even in my dream, I'm still like thinking for hours in my dream, what, what, what was the Sheikh going on about? What did he mean, Unsurullah? And then I woke up and I was still thinking about it. What did the Sheikh mean? What did the Sheikh mean? So I prayed my Salat al Fajr. <laughs> even you know, during the Salat, you're thinking, what did the Sheikh mean? Until I say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and it clicks with me. It says, you know, Kamal, don't be silly. You know, writing a status is very, very, you know, it's very low. Allah has given you better skills. Use it to the best of your ability. So I said, I'm going to write a poem in defense of Rasulullah sallallahu and this is the Sunnah of Hassan bin Thabit, who was called to defend the Messenger of Allah when he was insulted. So I went to Fajr 5 a.m. SubhanAllah, I finished writing a poem within two hours. And that generally never, never happens. It usually takes me like a month to finish a poem. But SubhanAllah, Allah willed for me to finish it within two hours. And not only that, I finished the video within one day. And within a week, I had over a million views. So SubhanAllah, I think the lesson of this story is not for me to say, oh wow, you know, he gets a million views, no. The lesson of this story is never underestimate yourself. Never underestimate your capacity. Allah has given each and every single one of us a skill set, a talent, something to contribute. When are we going to put it forth for the sake of Allah? Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, لَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Allah does not put a burden on the soul more than its capacity. But the problem with us is that we underestimate our capacity severely. Severely underestimate our true potential. 
And I honestly believe that if we knew our true potential and we took hold of it, especially our talents and skills that make us different, we have so much to offer for the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we would see the status of our ummah in a much better position. So I just wanted to briefly touch up on my history so inshallah that might inspire some of you here today. And inshallah, we'll leave it for the Sheikh. And then later after, I'll, I'll put some poetry inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. And thank you very much for listening.